Hi guys, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here and today we are going to do my nails. I'm so actually in love with them, you have to check them, so sit it here. Absolutely amazing set, like I actually asked the cameraman if he wants to marry me again. I love this look and I will be doing it in all sorts of colors for my clients. And I do really hope you will like and enjoy this video as well because it's actually quite easy to achieve. So please hit the like and share button for me, pretty pretty please. And then let's start doing this pretty set. They are so so pretty, I'm actually well impressed. Uh... They turn it out amazing and that's kind of style I love the most, uh, so not over, not over the top. I will show you how this has been done. So first of all, we need to clip off this uh, crystals from this set and there is a video on that set too. It's been on just over two weeks, so not my usual uh, kind of time, but uh, I need to work it out because we are going away and then we've got all those repairing jobs to do so I thought it would be nice to kind of get them fresh now so I'm clipping off the gems this is always a quite hard task because they are stuck extremely well and they are attached with the base gel this way you can really have your clients and yourself very satisfied with the amount of the time the crystals are lasting and I also find that the cuticle nippers are the easiest way to clip them off. Sometimes if you've got a large crystals, you would um, maybe if I it a little bit. You can also see it how dry my cuticle uh, cuticles are uh, because we have been already plastering a little bit. So let me get rid of that. And the last two. Be always careful when removing the crystals because they can jump in so you can either wear a protective um, eyewear. I would do really hardly recommend that. And then we are going to use the e-file. So that's the one, the portable one, which I like in a house because it doesn't have a cable. Um, it's not the most powerful one, but it's just enough for, for me working in a house. And now I'm just removing the beautiful design. And the crystals and when you filing of the crystals watch guys again for your eyes I love the safety bit because you can go a really nice around the cuticle area without of worrying of cutting the skin Okay, and this way my nail is ready for a next step. So we are going to take a file and reshape that nail. So file on the one side and then file on the other side into a V-shape. So one side, other side, shorten it. And then we have to bring the side walls a bit higher. And blend all the product around the cuticle area. We don't want to see where the product was starting, so we want to blend all that in. Okay, remove any dust and tidy up the cuticle area. So I'm just going to push back my cuticles and they really dry, extremely dry. And then swap into the cuticle bead. Put the e-file on. And first of all, we are going to do it one side. Don't put any pressure in there. So just clean that one side, put it back into the reverse and clean the other side. So I'm just removing the bits and pieces 
from the nail plate and I've got lots on this nail like as I say they have been extremely neglected <laughs> I didn't apply the cuticle oil at all this time and then straight away I've got lots of raggy bits and pieces I'm just going to clean them with that bit again you have to be careful to don't overfile the skin But I just need to give it a little clean to it because it's too much. <laughs> like very, very dry. Nip the stuff, we don't need it. So I'm using a cuticle nipper now. I really need to moisturize them. Okay, that's it, almost all done. So we can move on into the nail file and give it a couple more scratches into the natural nail and any shiny places we've got left. So this, this way our nail is nicely prepared. Dehydrate with the blue scrap. So nice and squeaky clean. And then a nail prep. So apply the nail prep, wait for it to dry. I'm going to get rid of this fan, we don't need it anymore. And then use an universal air bond. So universal air bond and again wait for it to dry. We are going to use the perfect rose gel. <laughs> Thank you cameraman. <laughs> and the gel brush. So I'm picking up a small scoop of the product, remove the excess of it because you don't want to have any product on your um, tip of the brush because this way you can go very nice and close to the cuticle and you've got lots of control of what you're doing. Pull down the huge nail folds and this way we have applied the gel over the entire surface. Pick up another scoop of the product so just like measure it how much we have missed and then start building the nail. So you're going quite close but not touching the cuticle and then doing the other side again quite close but don't go too close because by the time you finish the product is going to run in those places here. So very light pressure and now once we're going to the free edge we are pressing harder to smooth out the entire product. So this way I have filled my nail. I can add a drop more on this side and then we can cook it. So the fiber, fiber gel cures in 60 seconds. So 60 seconds cure. Doing uh, infills on such a uh, small growth is quite easy, I would say. So once my nail is curing, I'm always saving a time and grabbing some UV cleanser. So UV cleanser will remove the 
inhibition layer just a couple seconds longer and that's our nail ready for filing so we've removed this inhibition layer and then let's shape it I'm just going to grab some wipes so we don't have much of a nice and then we want to file it so I want to shorten it I want to file it on the one side other side bring those sides higher blend everything around the cuticle area And then smooth the entire surface of the nail. I love this movement because this movement fixes most of the imperfections on the nail. You can already see it. It starts looking quite nice. Check the length. So it's still a little bit too long. And each time when you're shortening the nail, like make sure you do thin out the free edge because it becomes thicker as we shorten it. Okay, that's me happy with it. So grab the buffer and just buff the entire surface. Couple of the movements. Brush away any bits and pieces, make sure the cuticle area is nice. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Cool. So let's move on now into the fun part and fun part is the design. For the design, we are going to use, first of all, a base gel. So I'm just grabbing a base gel to secure our crystals. Base gel in. Clean the entire nail with the blue scrub just so there is no dust particles and I have managed to do the dishes again <laughs> by this time. So there might be some oils on the nail plate. And then the flowers. I actually love those flowers. Uh, I think they are so nice and pretty. Now, the reason why I choose doing this way is such a time saver because we are going to um, do the crystals first, then freeze them and then do the design so you don't have to lose any time. That's the base gel in. Then this one is going into the direction of the index finger and this one is going to the pinky there we are grab the crystals in and we've got lots of uh, different ones I choose the white one it's kind of almost looks like a wedding set guys And then the smaller ones around it. So I'm just going to grab a couple so it's easier to pick them up if they twist into the right side. This one is. This one is. Drop more and drop more. Now I'm doing something which I wouldn't do it on the client. Uh, I'm doing the thumb at the same time what I'm doing the other finger. Uh, I can kind of twist my hand into the nice direction when I will be curing it so my gems wouldn't fall out but I wouldn't risk it on the client. Now we want to kind of secure them so they go around each other. Like I find it is always the nicest way. There we are. So they nice uh, around each other. And then do the same in here. Find those nice points. Actually, because of these flowers, 
supposed to be visible the group? Um, no, it will be still visible the same because it doesn't matter what we put around it. Okay, I'm happy with it. So if you if you would paint your nails with so here is a top coat. So the growth will be visible the same like if I would put the color and anything. The only reason why the growth might be not as visible is because we have no color but the actual gel. And I always love that look the most because that gives the longest lasting results. Gosh, hope that makes sense. Cameraman is asking hard questions. Step number two. <laughs> Take a drop of the base gel and go around it. Like you don't want to have any sticking out bits and pieces. Okay, so I'm kind of smoothing it out with the base gel. Searching for those sticking out parts. And put a drop of the base gel in there. To kind of secure them even more. See, you can see it, the flower is kind of sticking out in here a little bit. I don't want that. So I have just placed a base gel. Now we want the base gel also in the middles of the flowers. So small amount in the smaller one and then quite a decent amount in those large ones. A decent amount of the base gel. And then we are going to pick up the gems. So the, the flowers itself comes with uh, different things. <laughs> you've got some pearls, you've got some caviar beads. Um, I have chosen the gems for this ones. And in the past I have used those flowers with the caviar beads and I used the same technique to secure them, the base gel, and none of the caviar beads came off. I even tested on my most uh, trouble client, which is got the tendency to losing the gems and uh, she didn't lose any any of those flowers oh come on flower there we are okay i'm just pressing them down so they uh, fit in nicely and then the next ones we are going to grab is those tiny wee gems so they are much smaller a bit probably more fiddly to put on. And I'm using the gem picker. As you can see it, I'm just moving the things apart so it's easier to pick up the ones I need. Because they are two different sizes, so they are some smaller and the bigger ones. And here I'm picking up those bigger ones. And I love this set so much that I'm definitely going to recreate this look for my clients. Mm, in different colors. You know, the spring is coming, so they will look so pretty in the pastel colors. Like, I think absolutely amazing. Now let's freeze them. And again, to save the time, the freeze is going to be like literally 10 seconds. Then using the white French gel and the watercolor brush, we are going to have fun with the next part. So watercolor brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just picking up a small amount of the French gel. And then we are going to paint those design. Now for this part, I suggest you kind of freeze it once you're happy with it. So you want to paint it into the shape of the smile line. What I'm doing is I'm just basically picking up a small amount of the French gel. I'm pressing harder and then I'm pressing lighter. Okay, then place some petals here. And then another one in there. That's enough for this one. Next one. So petal here. Petal in there. Keep this uh, middle space empty uh, because you want to ha kind of have it at almost like a smile line. 
can see it also how quick it is to paint with the watercolor brush and um, I was really stressed actually how I'm gonna do it on my um, right hand with my left hand but it was easy with this brush as you can see it it literally takes me uh, seconds uh, to do it with my right hand and you don't have to be I don't know so precise or anything like that you just go press harder and then press lighter Don't put too much uh, product in because then you cannot press it the way you want. And then some single petal here. And another one. I'm just going to guys freeze them for a second. So 15, <clears throat> 15 seconds freeze, just so they don't move. And then the, uh, the Tyler brush, perfect. I can get it ready. It's such as pretty petals with the touches of the brush. Okay, I'm happy with this one as well. Well, let's maybe place something else in here. Cool. Freeze it. Again, 15 seconds is enough. And then the detailer brush. So I've got it here. That's enough. Now we are going to do a harder part. Actually, I could use the D-liner as longer. So let me do the D-liner on this one. And what you want to do it is you want to kind of do a lacy look. So very thin lines. Two lines in here. One in there, join this in. Actually, I need this. So what I'm doing now is I'm just painting like a wee lacy look. One dom. You have to make sure you have not too much uh, product on your brush. Because if you will have too much product, it, it's kind of really difficult to paint nice and thin lines. And also look what I'm doing. So if my hand is in that direction, I'm kind of trying to do all the lines in that direction first. It just again speeds up your work. So it looks really complicated. But I feel like, as I say, I was, I was really scary to do it, but it turned it out to be much easier than it looks. <laughs> and I think because it's a lacy look, you've got quite a lot of room for a mistake. And it's still gonna look really pretty. Okay, now we can change the direction of our hand. So I'm changing the direction and I'm going to do paint the lines that way now. And you can do two lines, you can do li one line. I 
I quite like the line which looks almost like a French so let's do the line like a French Nice and lacy look. No, that's easier. So again, like a French. kind of want to join the flowers you have painted with your lines. And as you can see it, I'm even going over the flowers. That's absolutely fine as well. Here will be a nice Frenchy one. Let me wear. Finish off the edges. Here again, something so it looks almost like a French. Oh, and this one is finished. Ta da! Yeah, so very quick and easy way. Let's cook it in. So I'm going to cure it now for the 30 seconds and then we can move on into our next step which will be a top coat. I'm going to use the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. So quickly cook them in and then start applying the top coat. Make sure you cut the free edge, top coat on another one. Now on the places where I've got the flowers, again I want to kind of push the top coat against them. Pull my nail folds down. And if you're struggling to reach those places, use a small brush. Top coat another one. Again, give those shakes so your top coat goes really around those flowers. I do not top coat them completely, but if the top coat catch them a little bit, like in this place, say example, I'm okay with that. It doesn't show as much, so. It's just really quick set, I would say, for, for the look of it, it's pretty quick. I don't know how long we record, but it seems very quick. And then top coat the thumb. The next step will be cooking and now I cannot shorten the curing time because we want to go with the next part which is going to be a lacy, lacy look. So our top coat needs to be cured really well which means 60 seconds. I also need to scrape the wee hair which I've gotten here. <coughs> I will stick with the base gel. That's it. So 
So I use the cuticle um, pusher to scrape away a wee bit which was stuck to the base gel. Check if the top coat didn't run. Another um, thing like some of you actually asked me this question, how what I do so my top coat doesn't run. It does run sometimes as well, especially when I place quite a lot of it. Um, so make sure you place it at nice and thin or you freeze it, like do it on the one or two needles and then freeze it. Okay, that's me ready for curing, 60 seconds cure. Okay, so when my hand is cooking, I'm just going to get ready for the next step. So this time, I find it uh, when I was painting uh, my right hand with the left hand, I tried to do it with the D-liner brush, but I didn't have as much control because it's a larger brush and I wanted the things to be really twisted like this. Uh, so I was scared my D-liner brush will flick it and I used the detailer brush and I find it much easier. So let me check it here again, how I'm gonna use it. Yeah, so you can see it here trying to do it very rounded shape with the D-liner and then trying to do the rounded shape with the detailer. Oh, I went into the base gel. I don't know, I think I find it, I think this one is a bit easier. Or maybe it was my just the thought of better, better control because it's shorter so I could use it more like a pen. Okay. So let's do it, next part. My next part is, I'm just going to do it the same. Uh, my next part is to outline those flowers. And again, you don't want to have too much product on your brush. I've got a little bit too much now. Gosh, can you see it? I'm just... Um, ah, okay, I'm just shaking the entire desk. So it might be hardly visible because it's just white on white. Obviously my nails are top coated and now I'm using the French gel and we are not going to top coat it. Is it? Okay, good. So I'm just painting those lacy parts. Also, in addition to that, I'm going to add a tiny bit in here, just like a small thing on its own without a background. One done, next one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> quite difficult to keep it in a camera. Your hands wants to automatically come closer to yourself because then you can stabilize them I think better. But anyway this one feels more like I would use a pen for drawing. The brush. So I can kind of paint faster probably. Now if you're scared you are going to touch your design, do one nil by one. I'm taking a risk. And do it all at the same time. Honestly, it will look so fantastic and, and pink as well. Uh, again, to achieve that pink, I would mix my uh, paint gels, red and uh, white, to receive a nice and pink color. So the, the stuff which is top coated, you could do it with any kind of gel polish, but the stuff which is on top of the top coat, you have to do it with the paint gels. You cannot do it with the gel polish. It might not last as well. and. 
this is a question you guys ask me often about like why the sugar doesn't last or or they are really pretty <laughs> why the sugar doesn't last <clears throat> and the may that that could be one of the reasons as well and you did see it me with the sugar nails many many times Again, I'm kind of working a bit random. I can even talk now uh, because it doesn't matter one millimeter this way, one millimeter the other way. You've got lots of room for a mistake with this design. And I think that's kind of designs which I love the most. That you can talk, you can have a fun with your client and they still gonna turn out pretty. And if you can do them with both of your hands, like this is uh, unbelievable. That's mean they are not as difficult or it's maybe maybe only me that's I do prefer those kind of twisty swirly work compared to other things. Now I have created some flower which a petal which didn't exist in that space and another one which didn't exist so it looks like this. Oh <laughs> I'm gonna sink another one in here. Now, if I want to have those rounded surface, I'm painting more with the, like those curve. I'm painting more, more with the straight brush. Again, my brush starts having to have too much product. So I have cleared some and is it is uh, my favorite set of the year because it's so quick to do it. Cameraman was drawing some plants of the of the salon. And I was sitting and doing the hand and was like, you know what, we have to quickly record it because it's quite late. Uh, I think it's like, you know, 11, 11 p.m. now uh, when we record it. Oh, that's so awesome. I love them. And it's, it feels like so much me. I do prefer those kind of designs on my nails. Uh, white, pinks, the, the look of the gel on its own it just makes me love my nails as you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of the gel polish color on my nails i don't know why i just prefer those kind of oh this one is so pretty too After that, I need to feed the cameraman because <laughs> his tummy is rambling. <laughs> you can probably hear it, guys. <laughs> oh, he have been fantastic. He have been so good today. I got some nice flowers. Just because. <laughs> so I need to make some nice food. Are you up for that? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Poor cameraman. Okay, another flower in. I hope I during the process I didn't destroy any ones which I have painted already. Okay, fantastic. I'm happy with this one as well, and this one, and this one, and all of them. So next step before we cure them is grab the sugar glitter, and then we are going to sprinkle them with the sugar glitter. I was got a heart attack that I lost the gem. No, that's from the previous set. Okay, 
So let's open it very carefully so we don't touch uh, the paint and then sprinkle it. So sprinkle it. It is not going to look nice until we cure it. Uh, I mean, it does look nice, but it's kind of hiding the design. So I'm just sprinkling it gently. Tap to remove the excess. And then we have to cure it. Give it a double cook. So I'm going to cure it at 120 seconds. Okay, close your stuff so you don't mess about. And then once your nails are cured, we are going to clean them with the dust brush. And this dust brush is quite nice and gentle. It it's, doesn't uh, destroy like your homes or sugar rings. So once it's clean, then I'm gonna do a baby wipe and you just clean everything around it um, for a nicer look, obviously. But that's the finished results almost. I will have to go and wash my hands and apply cuticle oil. I usually try to don't apply the cuticle oil until I wash the hands because they might be still residues of the products and the cuticle oil will make your um, skin to absorb ev everything kind of more. Uh, so that's why I'm not keen. And also I usually try to don't touch the top coat until it cools down a little bit. So you want your top coat to cool down a little bit. Obviously, once we put the cuticle oil, things will be even prettier. But I love this set. Like, I mean, it's so, so wedding. Will you marry me again? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, like I could get wedding kind of those style meals every single time. Uh, I'm doing them. I hope you have guys really enjoyed this tutorial. All the products are available on our website uh, and I'm sending you glittery, glittery hugs and bye for now.